Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a computer running Ubuntu 14.10 Linux. You can see that we're connected to the internet, uh, Wi-Fi works, Bluetooth works, and audio works. So what computer is this? This is actually an Intel Compute Stick, which is this tiny little computer here that you plug, to the, uh, plug into the HDMI port of your monitor or TV to run desktop type software on a TV. Uh, there's only a single full-size USB port here. There's a micro USB port that's used for power. So I've plugged in a uh, hub here with a mouse and a keyboard, and you're gonna need that hub in order to install Ubuntu on this particular model. Now, Intel does actually have a version that has Linux preloaded, has Ubuntu uh, 14.04, but that version has one gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabytes of storage, whereas the Windows version has two gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage. So I noted when I reviewed the Windows version uh, earlier in 2015 that you could install Ubuntu, but that Wi-Fi would not work properly uh, out of the box if you just tried to install it from an SD card or something the way I did. Uh, Linuxium or Ian Morrison, uh, somebody who uh, posts on Google Plus a lot about mini PCs and Linux, has been working with me to sort of troubleshoot the process and he's come up with a method for getting it to run with everything working the way you see it here right now. It's still not a super fast computer and there's still uh, certain kinks to work out, but you can find instructions for loading this at lilliputing.com. Uh, the first step is basically that you need that USB hub and a USB flash drive and then his custom 64-bit version of Ubuntu and then you need to go through a bunch of steps. Again, I'm not going to uh, tell them all to you here, but uh, you can find them at lilliputing.com. Once you've done that, everything sort of works, but audio playback is extraordinarily choppy. So uh, the next way around that is to enter a couple of different commands and you can uh, then go in and... Um, change from a 64-bit bootloader, even though we're using 64-bit software, to a 32-bit bootloader. Uh, that makes our audio not work at all. <laughs> then there's a patch that you can apply, and once you've applied that patch, then you have the 32-bit bootloader, working audio, working Wi-Fi, working Bluetooth, uh, working pretty much everything. The only, uh, the only trick is that you need to go into your settings and basically hit F10 and choose the Grub bootloader that way every time you want to load Ubuntu. Um, what, what we've actually done here is installed Ubuntu to a micro SD card, which means that we haven't touched the Windows software that's on the computer, but we have altered the bootloader. So I can boot into Windows or Ubuntu anytime I want, but if I want to get rid of that bootloader, that Grub bootloader, and just use the Windows bootloader, uh, because I've decided I'm done with Ubuntu, then you need to follow some more commands. Again, this is all written out at lilliputing.com. So let's take a quick demonstration here that audio and video are working. Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is an Android phone, a Google Nexus 5, and it is running a Microsoft application called Cortana. This is a uh, pre-release version of Cortana. It's going to be available in beta pretty soon for, uh, for everybody on Android, and it's Microsoft. So there you go, working video from YouTube. I'm just going to go ahead and shut down here and show you that I can still boot into Windows from the same machine. At least I think that's what we're going to do. There we go. And once this completes, we go to sort of a black screen. I'm going to go ahead and sort of mash that F10 button just to show you what I'm talking about. Now, theoretically, I could boot into Windows without doing this. It's just to get back to Ubuntu that you need this step. But from here, even though there's only one option, we're going to choose that one option. And then we have the choice of going to Ubuntu, which is the default, or we can go to the Windows Boot Manager. So Windows, again, is still loaded on the internal storage of the compute stick. Uh, I've got an 8 gigabyte micro SD card slot that has Ubuntu loaded on it. This is Brad Linder, and a look at the Intel compute stick dual booting Windows and Ubuntu 14.10 Linux, uh, thanks to the help of Ian Morrison.